everybody and welcome to Bridge Youth Essentials. This is a condensed version of what normally happens on a Friday night. So it's youth with a twist, a little bit of a twist. And today we're going to be looking at Created Creative and we're going to be unpacking that in a couple of moments. Before we do that, if you're here for the first time, we'd love to connect with you. Send us a WhatsApp. We'd love to help you understand who God's created you to be. Add you to a fan group so that you can grow into all that God has for you. And as mentioned, we're going to be looking at creative things that God created. And He's created us all with different gifts and talents. So in a couple of moments, we're going to look at a video of everybody's gifts and talents creatively created to be using them in a fun, dynamic way. So let's have a look. How encouraging are all those different video clips and just to see your talents and how creative every one of you are. And as Brendan mentioned, we are created, creative. God is creative and therefore we are creative. Who here thinks that they are creative? You can put your hand up, even if it's a bit awkward, if you're in your room and you're putting your hand up, maybe it feels weird. But so some of you, it'll be like, yes, I am creative. I'm an artist or I can sing well, or I'm a musician. But for some of us, it's like, no way. Like I love maths and is maths creative? Well, I don't know. Sometimes you get creative with answers, but at the end of the day, we are all created, creative. And I think what's really important to understand is that God created you creative. And although every one of us are different, every one of us are creative different. We created differently, but we also creative differently. So some of us are better at math, some of us are better at art, some of us are better at speaking, some of us are better at listening. But in every one of those areas, you can get creative with the way you do things. So Brent, what do you think of that? Thanks, Just. And the first question we need to ask is, do we think God is creative? I mean, if you look at sunsets, Remember when the sun sets and the sky is red and then everybody makes their WhatsApp status as this red sky and it's like, oh, well, God's creative. Think about sunrises. Think about animals. God is creative. Do you know how I know that? Have you ever seen an ostrich? That takes skill to create. A giraffe. It is a horse with like this long neck. God is a creative God. He designed everything in such a way. In fact, He's made us creative. Now, for me, I am not a creative person in terms of drawing. My stick men are still skewed. I'm not created that way, but yet I'm made in God's image. In fact, we're made in God's image. So therefore we are creative, creative. <laughs> therefore we are created, creative. I love what it says in Genesis. It says this, God spoke and he said, let us make human beings in our image, make them reflect in our nature so that they can be responsible for absolutely love that. I just love what God says there right in the beginning that we are created in His image. Just what do you think about it? I absolutely love that verse in Genesis and it speaks about the way that God created us, that we created in His image. And sometimes when we think of image, we think of the way that we look. But in this sense, it's His character. It's, it's the way He is more than His thought process. It's His character. And I love this verse in Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. Hey, can I just pause right there? You are God's masterpiece. It doesn't matter what somebody said about the way you look or the way you dress or the way you speak. You are God's masterpiece. Piece. Every one of us look differently, but we're still God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. I think we need to get to the point where we know that God loves us and He created us just the way that we need to be. So our little quirks and the things that make us unique and different are the things that make us the way God created us to. If every one of us were the same, life would be really, really boring. Think, think about it. If everyone was like Brendan, I mean, I don't know what kind of world that would be, but every one of us are different and that's what's exciting. Remember that God is a creator. He created something 
from nothing, but we are makers. We create something from something. I think what's beautiful about that is that God created so many different things for us to invent and to discover. And every time we do something new, it's God working in and through us. And that's why He created us the way that we need to be. He created trees and we make tables and chairs and couches and all these different things. God gave us intelligence and we're able to make technology. We're able to make things like PlayStations for, for the gamers out there or is it Xbox? I think PlayStation wins. But anyway, we created technology because God gave us intelligence. God gave us musical gifts and we create be uh, beautiful songs and music and things that, that sound good. You see, God created things so that we can make things. So the question is, what are you making? What, what are you doing with the gifts that God has given you? Bryn? There we go. Thanks, Just. I absolutely agree with that. You know, if we've got something, we need to use our something. So if you're watching this, you've got something, use your something. If you've got a gift or a talent, don't hold on to it. Use it, use it to serve people, use it to reach people, use it to honor God. We've all got gifts and talents. Let's not sit on it and hide it. Let's show the world the gifts that God has given us. If you've got the creative gift of making music, then make music. If you've got the creative gift of drawing, draw something. I can't draw, my stick men, again, they're like this. They're like got these long arms, but that's not my gift. But perhaps your gift or your creative flair is in sports. Use it, whatever gift you've got, Use it. Let's use it to reach people, serve people, but honor God. And as we do that, we'll continue to step into the best possible life that God has for us. Again, use your something for something. So just perhaps over the next couple of moments, you know, what, what inspires you? Because what inspires us is normally where our creative bent is. For, in fact, if you love sports and in sports inspires you, well then perhaps step into a sports role or go somewhere along those lines. For me, what inspires me is to help people feel like they love. When somebody feels loved and cared for and appreciated, that inspires me. So what inspires you? Let us know. What inspires you? Just what inspires you? I think that's a great uh, question, Bren. And I think there's a lot that inspires me. And one of the things that really inspire me is to see people stepping into their purpose, see people using their gifts. I love the fact that when, when our country comes together, so say for example, a sport like rugby, when, when the Springboks win the World Cup, I've never seen a more unified family, a more unified country. And that is what inspires me. When people come together, celebrating one thing, coming together and just supporting each other, putting all the issues and the struggles to the side for one second and just focusing on that focusing on the celebration. That's really what inspires me. When I see a whole bunch of teenagers genuinely worshiping God, when I see a whole bunch of teens stepping into their leadership gifting and into, into everything that God called for them, that inspires me. Stuff, when you step into your purpose, there's nothing that inspires me more than that. And I love the fact that God gave us each different gifts, that each of us are called to do different things. And that's what you need to recognize today, that you have been given certain gifts and God's created you that way so that you can use that creatively for Him and for others. So the question is, what gifts has God given you? And every one of us have different gifts. I mean, my gift is clearly aging well. I'm actually 60 years old, but I just look, no, I'm joking. I'm not. But, you, you know, we have different gifts. And, and I, I don't know, maybe, maybe your gift is you're really good at listening. That's a gift. Use that gift creatively. Maybe it is musically or, or you're an artist or you're just a really good gamer. How are you using that gift? And I think every one of us has more than one gift and you have to find what that is. And maybe at the moment you can't think of anything. Just find what, what things are you passionate about? What things are you good at doing? And combine those things to put it together. And I think maybe one of my gifts would maybe be bringing people together and just connecting with them, trying to see what their purpose is and helping them reach that. Maybe that's what God has called for me, but maybe that's a gift of mine. And you have your own gifts. So what are your gifts? Think about them for a second. Bren, what are, your, what are some of your gifts? That's a good question. Just my wife would say that I've got the, the gift of frustrating her and uh, make sure that I use that very well. No, I'm joking, but it's really important that we find out what gifts we have. And as Justin mentioned, sometimes we, we're going to know exactly what our gift is. If you can sing, that is your gift. For some of us, we're on that journey of understanding what gifts we actually do have. I mean, I really hope that after somebody leaves a conversation with me, that they feel loved, that they feel cared for. So maybe that's my gift. But again, we're still on this journey of understanding the gifts that God has given us. So perhaps as, as we conclude, you know, the, the last thing is what stops you from being creative? What hinders you? 
For me personally, you know, I'd like to continue to reach more people, but sometimes maybe it's a lack of confidence, insecurities that limit me in expressing my creative flair. I might have a good idea. I might want to do something, but I'm like, oh, are people going to listen to that? Are people going to take this? Are people going to trust me with it? So perhaps that's something that limits me. Maybe you're watching this and tiredness. You want to achieve everything, but you wake up in the morning like, oh, I don't know if I can do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. Perhaps that. Maybe you want to go viral. You want to reach people in the social sphere of life and you want to, you know, do things on TikTok, but you realize technology is something that you know nothing about, perhaps. Maybe you need to do a course in, you know, learning how to use photo editors or video editors. What are these hindrances that stop you from realizing that you actually created creative? Just what are some of the things that, that challenge you? Some of the things that stop your creativeness? That's so good, Brent. And I think what's so important is that we recognize what blocks us from being creative. We must recognize our gifts, firstly, very important. But also we need to recognize what blocks us from being creative. So those answers were really, really good. And you can see Brendan's got the gift of intelligence and the gift of beauty. And that's why he's an amazing person. I'm just messing. No, I'm not. He's a good guy. But I think one of the things that block us from being creative, every one of us, is something called FOF. Yes, FOF. Fear of failure, fear of failure. When, we've, when we're scared of failing or when we're afraid of failing, then that blocks us from doing anything. It blocks us from taking risks. It blocks us from stepping into what God has called for us. It blocks us from speaking to people. It blocks us from asking questions. It blocks us from being creative. As soon as we can get over that fear of failure, I promise you, everything will change. And maybe that's where you find yourself today that you're afraid that you're gonna fail. You're afraid that you're not good enough, that you're afraid that, that maybe there's not more to your life, that this is it. Can I encourage you that God created you creative? And no matter where you find yourself today, know that He's put a gift in you, that He's created you with a purpose and, and with a plan in mind, that you, you are exactly the way that you need to be. And we need to step into the best version of ourselves. And the best way we can do that is take our gifts, Take the way that God created us and not try and compare ourselves to other people, not complain about what we don't have, but use what we have, what God gave us and step into the best version of ourselves. That's the best thing. Know this, that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life and no one gets the Father except through Him. That, me that means that He's the way, the truth and the life to being the best version of ourselves. The way, the truth, the life to being creative in the way that we need to be creative. Not just in creative, you creative. Just put your name there. You are created creative. Just remember that. You are created creative. And as we remember that, God will start doing some incredible things in our lives. And maybe you, wherever you find yourself watching this, maybe you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. And maybe that's a step that you need to take today. Maybe that's this, there's a burning feeling or desire in your heart where there's something missing. And, and maybe that's you knowing that you need to make a decision to follow Jesus. It might feel like butterflies in your tummy or you might feel warmth over you or something like that. But just know that, that God's already chosen you. He's already created you. Remember, you are His masterpiece that you just need to decide if you want to commit your life to Him. So choose, choose right now. I want to follow Jesus. And maybe for some of you, you've prayed that prayer before and you have committed your life. But for some reason, maybe it was the fear of failure or the fear of, of, of whatever's blocking you from committing your life to Him. Maybe that stopped you before and you've drifted away from Him. Recommit your life. He's not just any father. He's the perfect good father, a forgiving father. And He'll accept you with open arms. I love, I love what it says in Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, and knock, that we can ask God for anything. We can ask Him to come into our lives and, and He'll give that to us, that we can seek Him. And when we seek Him, we're putting Him first in our lives and we can knock at His door just as He's knocking at your door right now. He's knocking at the door of your heart and He's saying, listen, you are my child. I created you. I want to be in your life. And when we do that, it's the beginning of an incredible journey, the beginning of something new, something different. And maybe that's exactly what you need to commit to today. So make that decision. I'd love to pray with you. And it, it's, it's not something awkward. It's not something fearful. It's not something that, that you need to be blocked about. It's something that you can decide to do and God will do wonders in you. Come, let's pray together. 
Father, I thank you for everyone watching this. I pray that you can help us see our gifts, see that we created creatively and that we can step into the best version of ourselves. Thank you that you created every one of us so uniquely and so differently. And we pray that we can step into that. I pray for all those that make a decision to follow Jesus in this moment, those that recommit their lives, that you would go into their lives. Holy Spirit, that your presence would be felt even right now in this moment as I pray, that you would take them to where they are, to where they need to be. Take them to the best version of themselves. I pray that you, you would forgive every one of us for our sins and mistakes and that we can step into the best version of ourselves and make you Lord and Savior of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, congratulations. It's an incredible decision. If you made that decision for the first time or you recommitted your life, let us know. We want to help you on that journey. Send us a WhatsApp, 0827369668. We'll help you with your next step. Because what do you do now? I made a decision. What now? There's always a next step. There's always room for growth. Send us a WhatsApp. We'll help you on that journey. It's the beginning of something beautiful. Congratulations for that decision. But we want to encourage you, stay connected with us. Stay connected to, to Youth Online. And as soon as we can meet physically, get connected physically as well. Stay connected to your fam group. Remember, Fam 1000, we want to reach 1,000 teenagers in fam groups this year, 2021. So help us reach that goal. We already over 700 teenagers. Be part of the family. Get connected. Send us a WhatsApp. But remember, each week, each one, reach one. We want to keep reaching people, change our community, change our nation for Jesus. And we, we need your help to do that. So help us send links out, invite friends, connect with them, take them through Pathway, do all the good things. Each week, each one, reach one. We're going to keep doing that. Stay connected with us, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.